participants. Um, of course, we want you to sign in for your points today. So I will put that link in the chat box like usual. But we're going to be talking about preventing chronic disease today with Jennifer. And Jennifer, I'll have you tell a little bit about what you do. Um, and we could just jump right in. Okay, great. Um, so I am a pharmacist at St. Mark's Hospital. Um, I am the residency program director. And what that means is we have a postgraduate residency program for pharmacists. So after they graduate pharmacy school, um, they have applied and have matched um, with a PGY1 site. Some even go on to do a second year of residency. Um, so I manage our pharmacy residents and all of the learning that is involved with that. Um, it's been a really good experience for us at St. Mark's to have these learners. We've been involved with this for about five years so far, and it makes it really like elevates our program and makes us work harder. So we are good pharmacists and really do a, a good job. Um, I feel like the pharmacy department at St. Mark's is one of the best around. So if you find yourself admitted to St. Mark's, uh, know that you're in good hands as, and um, if you ever need anything from one of us while you're there, please reach out. We are more than happy to help. So, um, well, let's just dive right into our presentation. Um, and as we get started, I do have the chat box up. And if you want to ask a question, feel free to enter a question there and I will answer it when I can. If I have a few times where we, I ask you questions, feel free to unmute yourself and chime in, use the chat box whatever feels comfortable to you. And uh, hopefully we can make this a little bit more of a discussion. Um, so the main, uh, I don't know. Okay, so I feel like chronic health prevention is just such a broad term. And so I was thinking, well, what would I like to talk about and what do you, I think is really important as far as um, chronic health prevention goes. So I, I won't hit everything that we could think about, but these are some of the main heavy hitters that um, I, I thought of. So the first one is, um, is lifestyle. How are you living your life in order to stay healthy? Um, of course, as a pharmacist, I don't think I could talk about this without touching about med, uh, medications for a while. Um, and then preventative care, including, you know, are you getting your physicals? Are you up on your vaccinations? Are you getting your cancer screenings? Um, so if you have more that you would like to, to point out, especially as we get towards the end, feel free to jump in and we can talk about it. Um, but what does it mean to live a healthy lifestyle? So a few things that I thought of were, are you moving your body? Are you getting the exercise that you need, um, eating healthy, managing your weight, getting enough sleep, reducing stress, um, and stop smoking? I feel like are the biggest um, lifestyle modifications that you can have. Um, and maybe I should talk more about reducing stress than I gave credit for. So if you know, I noticed that we do have some mental health advisors on the line, and if you want to chime in and we can talk about it, we can. Um, especially with this pandemic, I feel like everybody's kind of a lot more stressed than typical. So, um, let's uh, talk about that if we need. So, instead of the word exercise, I have stumbled across the saying joyful movement. Um, I listen to quite a few podcasts and um, follow a lot of people on social media who are dietitians and they consider themselves anti-diet dietitians. Um, and there are several out there. And as I was listening to them one day, they kept using the term joyful movement and I thought, I love that because really it's so important to find ways to exercise and move your body that 
you enjoy. Um, I think as we talk a lot about movement and diet and um, weight loss, um, sustainability, I think, is like the key theme to come back to. Um, so if you find ways that you love moving your body, then that is what I want to stress over exercising. Um, I don't personally enjoy going for a long run. <laughs> so if I feel like that's the only way I can exercise, then I won't do it. So um, it's, it's fun to um, find new ways. And I have a slide in a couple asking you um, what your favorite ways to exercise are. So as we talk about this, go ahead and put um, different ideas in the chat box. Um, so we can have those kind of coming in versus just at that one time. But um, the biggest thing I can stress over exercise is just finding something you love to do. Um, involve your friends. You know, I know I love going for a walk if I can be with a friend and chat versus just going by myself. Although if I do go by myself, um, having a audiobook um, and a good playlist, a good podcast are great ways to keep moving. Um, walking your dog um, is a great thing. Walking up Mill Creek Canyon with the dog to Elbow Fork. Um, pets are such a good way to get you outside and moving. I agree. Um, finding something that you are good at, finding a new hobby, a new exercise routine, something that you, you know, um, exploring other options is a good thing to do. Um, my favorite movie quote is run for fun. What the heck kind of fun is that? Yes, perhaps. <laughs> that's how I feel. And you know what? I was a huge runner in high school. Like I was a state track runner and I hate now that I am older, I hate running. <laughs> so <laughs> it's funny how like sometimes things can change as you get older. Um, you know, having having kids and a job is definitely makes it a lot harder to find ways to exercise. So like shifting your mindset, you know, to work with whatever situation you have now is important. Um, so I have an Apple Watch. I know there's things like Fitbit or other trackers. Those are fun because they can be motivating. Um, you know, I like get my circles um, and, you know, especially as I like vacuum my house or do housework and I like see my little exercise ring clothes like that is really motivating to me. Um, also, especially for us um, that have jobs and we get distracted, I think sitting down in front of our computer, we forget to get up and move. So my watch will say, okay, it's been an hour since you've moved, you need to get up. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, I feel like sometimes your brain will work better if you do allow yourself to step away from your desk, de-stress, get your body moving. You'll stay productive longer, especially when you reach, you know, two, three, four o'clock. Um, uh, it's also important to stay accountable to somebody if that's what you need to stay motivated. Um, and then I will, we might talk about this later, but I feel like it's a good time to talk about the fact that it's good to associate to dissociate um, food from exercise. Um, making sure that you're moving your body because it makes you feel good, because it reduces stress, because you know that it's doing good for your heart and not because of what you ate. So I think that's a really good um, uh, thing to touch on is don't use exercise as a way to justify what you have eaten because um, I feel like that's where sometimes you can fall into these unhealthy mental habits with dieting. So for me, it's good to separate exercise. I'm exercising because it makes me feel good and not because I made cookies last night, you know, so, um, we'll, we'll continue to talk about that as we get to the diet portion of our, of our lecture. Um, so staying active, um, this is the American Heart Association, like we've talked about, um, being active is important for your heart, especially, 
Um, it's good to um, keep yourself from falling, especially as you age, keeping your bones healthy, your cartilage healthy, your muscles strong. Um, so like I said, exercise is so important for our overall health. Um, it's important to mix moderate and vigorous activity, um, keeping it fun, mixing it up, keeping it interesting. Um, so the American Heart Association recommends 150 out, uh, minutes per week of moderate activity, which some examples of that might be walking briskly, uh, going for a bike ride, mowing the lawn, cleaning the house. Um, and vigorous would be more like running, jump rope, uh, workout class, playing basketball, um, you know, those types of things. And it's also important to know that this activity should be throughout the week. So as you spread it out, it's actually healthier. So doing, um, so playing like one game of basketball during the week and then being sedentary the rest of the week is not as healthy as, um, you know, going for walks the next day and trying to just stay active every day. So um, 150 minutes is about a half hour, five times a week. So um, it doesn't have to be, um, doesn't have to necessarily be organized either. So um, one thing, especially, so I'm not in very good shape anymore. I am feel like I need to, you know, listen to myself and and exercise more. Um, some things that I like to do are, um, especially since it's homes and it's cold outside, it's harder to exercise indoors. Um, so, and I hate being on the treadmill for a half hour. That is so miserable to me. So I like to do like 10 minutes on the treadmill. And then there's like so many free YouTube videos that you can do. Um, so then you can do like 10 minutes of yoga and then you can do, 10 minutes of another workout class you see, or hop back on the treadmill or hop on your stationary bike or, you know, so mixing it up is a great idea too. And, um, can sometimes keep it less boring. So, um, do what you need to do. Keep it fun. Keep it interesting. Start low and gradually increase. I know sometimes I think, well, I used to be able to do this, um, workout video just fine. So I'll do it. And then the next day I really can't, um, move <laughs> so then I don't move at all the next day you know so like starting slow and working your way up is always a good thing to do um someone mentioned they like we you for indoor exercising um so there are some great video games that out there that have you move your body um my kids really like playing connect dancing and that's really fun. And there's actually like workout sections you can do that will just like keep the music going. And um, so yeah, using technology and video games is a fun way to make it fun and also get your heart pumping. So thanks for that comment. Um, so I feel like we've talked a lot about this already, but why do you stay active? Um, again, let's let's focus on staying active for health benefits versus trying to work off the food that you ate. Um, so staying active can decrease your risk of dying prematurely, um, dying from heart disease. Um, they say that if you really want benefits to your heart, that you know you might need to step it up to do moderate high intensity. Um, but like I said, start slow. Just go where you are and um, and and work work towards a goal. Um, if you are active, you can decrease your risk of stroke, diabetes, high blood pressure, colon cancer. Um, you can improve um, in feelings that you have from depression and anxiety and your psychological well-being. And I put an asterisk on that because I think it's important to note that while you can improve your mental state a little bit from staying active, you know, it increases endorphins and dopamine. Um, that if you do suffer from consistent feelings of depression, sadness that is just like day after day, um, and or you're feeling anxious and this anxious feeling just won't go away, that it really is important to seek out professional help, whether that's from your general practitioner, from a therapist.
in terms of Jennifer, you're skipping out a little bit. It looks like you have the yeah. low bandwidth um, no. icon okay. on your video. Okay, well, I maybe I'll turn off my video and see if that helps. I was worried about that. So thanks for letting me know. Um, and if any participants have on their video, maybe turn it off too, and that will help save some bandwidth. Yeah. All right, hopefully that's better. You say on? Yeah, you sound great right now. Okay, okay so um, I will just keep my video off and hopefully that will help the sound a little bit. So, which, you know, is probably better than you don't have to stare at me, staring at a computer screen. Um, so I love, um, okay, so it looks like um, Sadie sent a PDF of ideas to work out at home. So check that out, and um, I'm sure there's some really great ideas. Um, I have turned off my video so we can save bandwidth. I think sometimes WebEx gets bogged down with all of us doing our virtual meetings. So, um, and, and the ding is if people join or leave the meeting, and we, for some reason, it's not letting us turn off that ding. So just bear with us. I apologize. <laughs> Um, Kent says Zumba burn it up for Nintendo switch is great, which is good to know. I have not tried that one. It sounds fun. Um, and a lot of people are coming up with some great ideas about what to do, especially, um, with the poor weather we've been having. And I think most Utahns are pretty good at getting outdoors. Um, especially when the weather is nice, like we live in such a good climate and place to live that we can go biking and hiking and enjoy being outside and the beautiful um, outdoors. So um, another reason to stay active is to control your weight, build healthy bones, muscles, and joints. And as you get older, if you have, um, it will help your balance as your muscles and bones are stronger. So uh, it is important to stay active, and that's why I brought this up. Number one in our chronic disease prevention, because motion is lotion, and um, I think that is probably one of the best things we can do for our long-term health. So here was my question. What are your favorite ways to stay active? I appreciate all of the comments that have come in um, for ways to stay active. So thank you all for participating. Um, and let's move on to dietary guidelines. So why is it important to eat healthy? Um, and I think there is, this is such a tricky subject to talk about because I firmly believe that there is health at every size. So as I do talk about weight loss, weight loss um, I want to do so carefully because I know many of us struggle with our weight and I don't want to be another healthcare professional just saying that if you want all your problems to go away just lose weight because that is not what I think it's about um and as I'm raising my small children up I'm trying to teach them about eating healthy and to listen to their body and you know after you eat candy does it make you feel good probably not after you eat um something that, you know, like some apples and peanut butter, that snack is, will make you feel better, you know, 15, 20 minutes later versus the candy that you eat. And so listening to your body, I think is so important. Um, and why, again, it's going to lower your risk of heart disease, type two diabetes. There are cancers that are associated with a higher risk if you are overweight. Um, so there's another reason, um, lower your risk of hip fracture. Um, so every five years or so, the um, dietary guidelines comes up with a new food pyramid. Um, and with it being 2020, I think they've updated it yet again. But um, I feel like the bases are still the same. Um, it's important to eat a wide variety, whoop, wide variety of foods. Um, so myplate.gov is a great resource. If you want to, you know, look around on that website, um, there's so many good um, 
there's so much good information on there that I think it's well worth your time. Um, so just a reminder that as you do cook a meal for yourself, it's important to have a wide variety of foods and colors, um, making sure that half your plate is full of fruits and vegetables, um, grains are good, carbs are good, um, and protein is also good as well. Uh, switching up your proteins is a good thing. Um, you know, having beans for dinner is good. And then maybe chicken the next night. Um, limiting your red meat is also a good idea. Having the leaner cuts, um, switching your grains from, you know, are you eating white bread or, you know, is that a switch that you could make to a whole grain bread, you know, just because, I don't know, finding the brand that you like, I feel like makes a big difference. There are some whole wheat breads that I think are disgusting, but some that are really good. So finding like your brand that you like. Um, and as far as, you know, eating, I think it's so important that you start small. Um, like, you know, I've said before, sustainability is what we're going for. There are so many studies that show like massive weight loss, like your risk of gaining it back is so high because the way you lose that weight is just not sustainable. Um, so, you know, let's think about as you're making dinner every night, well, what substitution can I make to make this meal healthier? Um, and, you know, so switching out something like, um, brown rice for white rice or, or the other way around, um, choosing the whole grains is a good way to do that. Um, fruits and vegetables, um, buying fruits and vegetables that are in season. Um, also frozen fruits and vegetables, cans, canned fruits and vegetables are also, um, usually preserved at their like peak freshness. And so those are always um, a good um, alternative, um, especially, you know, if it's hard to get to the store frequently because, you know, your produce does seem to go bad faster. Um, and then if you do choose, you know, canned fruit, just try to use something that's in like a light, light syrup versus like a heavy sugary syrup. Um, so, and then drink a lot of water, um, making sure that your body is getting the hydration it needs. So it's not triggering you to think that you're hungry when you really just need a glass of water is a great um, thing to have in the back of your mind as well. I personally, so this is my, oh, I, I guess I don't have my video on my, I drink better and more water if I have a straw. So um, that's my tip for you is find a, um, a water bottle that will keep your water cold and that has a straw in it because you will drink a lot more water. <laughs> so, um, and then learning how to read a nutrition facts label is also important. If you don't know how, um, I'm happy to help walk you through that later. Um, also something that's interesting is many health insurance plans, um, as part of their preventative health coverage will pay for a couple visits with a registered dietitian per year. So you could look into that and meet with them and say, I don't understand like what I'm supposed to do. This is also overwhelming and they can help walk you through it. Um, so check out your insurance coverage and, and see what resources are available for that. Um, so like we said, weight loss is important for long-term health, but um, make sure you try to shift your mindset, which this isn't easy for me, um, to from how your body looks to how your body feels. So fuel your body and move your body because it makes you feel well and not because you are unhappy with how you look. So try to get in um, peace with how you're looking. Um, enjoy being you first and take care of yourself. Um, health benefits can be seen as early as 5% of your weight loss. So, you know, start small. Lifestyle changes are very hard um, and try to pick things that um, are sustainable. But, you know, that word I'm going to say a lot, sustainability is important. Um, okay. And this, I loved this quote. Um, from this registered dietitian. She says, behaviors impact health much more than weight. People of all body sizes can improve their health without seeking weight loss. So again, just trying to shift your mindset from 
oh, you know, trying to lose so much weight, you know, first talk about your behaviors first and see where that gets you. I know sometimes in the medical community, um, I don't know if you've been there, you know, you go to the doctor and they talk way more about your weight than you feel comfortable with. And while I think that conversation is important, I think it's important to maybe have the conversation of, well, what are, what are your behaviors to staying healthy versus what is just your number? What is your BMI? Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe that is a better perspective to have. Um, <clears throat> okay. Next section is medications. You know, as, <clears throat> excuse me, as a pharmacist, you know, I can't talk about preventative health without talking about your medications and preventing uh, chronic disease. So um, it's important as you take medications to take your medications as they are directed, because if you are not taking your medications as directed, you might not be getting any benefit out of it. You might be only experiencing some side effects. As you go to the doctor, they assume that um, the medications they prescribe to you, you're taking um, a certain way. And if you're not, then maybe they think that they need to add another one to it, where maybe it's just that you need to take your medications. So um, there was a stat that I read that three out of four Americans don't take their meds the way that they're supposed to, which is really high. And we'll talk about um, in a slide or two why I think that there's people are taking their medications the right way. And there are so many things that I thought of. Um, so I would like to get your perspective. Why, why do you think some people aren't taking their medications? And then, um, as we talk later, we'll, I'll read the, um, comments. So poor medication adherence. I also read takes the lives of about 125,000 Americans annually. They cost the health system nearly 300 billion a year in additional doctor visits, emergency visits and hospitalizations. Um, so, and if, you know, as a pharmacist, if you have a question about your medications, you don't want to take it because you're worried about a side effect. Um, oh, here we go. This is what I just said. Um, talk to a pharmacist, talk to your doctor because, you know, medications, do sometimes make different people feel differently. Um, and sometimes we can calm your fears about the side effects. We can maybe change your regimen that you're on. So um, speak up. I, I want you to know that you have a say in your healthcare and um, that there are advocates for you. Um, and as a pharmacist, I would be more than happy to be an advocate for you. Um, and, uh, well, I work at a hospital now and maybe not as, as accessible. I have worked at retail locations and I can tell you the highlight of your day as a pharmacist is not checking medications, but talking to people about their health and their, um, their medications. And so speak up and speak up to your your primary care provider or whoever's providing you your medications, because I want you to know that you do have a say in what you take. Um, so what do you think, or what are some reasons why people don't take their medications as prescribed? I'll give you a minute or two to think about this and enter some comments and I'll read the comments and we'll go through what I thought. Um, so I'll just give you a minute or two. All right. Okay. Oh, I have a few more comments coming in. So, and I feel like you have come up with some very 
um, good reasons of why it is hard to be compliant with your medications. <laughs> <clears throat> and I think every single thing that people have commented on is absolutely valid. And um, so let me just read a few. Um, okay. Side effects. I think that is a very good one. I take my medications to keep my cholesterol healthy and heartburn medication. It does keep you healthy. Uh, forget, lack of routine, fear of side effects, multiple meds, confusion, accidentally forgetting one, um, cost, some make you sleepy and you don't want to wake up tired when you have a busy day planned, forgetting to get refills, eating, not eating, timing, side effects, um, some suggestions on how to keep your medications, best way to re Members put your daily drugs in a baggie and that way you will not forget. Don't pharmacists know about drug interactions and physicians in general? Yes, I would agree with that. Um, and taking the wrong dose from an old prescription. Very good. And you know what? That's one that I didn't bring up. So I'm glad you brought that up, Laura, <clears throat> is um, forgetting things that change. And that's something that happens a lot, um, like when you get admitted to a hospital and then you go home, like you come in and we tweak your medications and figure out what's wrong. And then you go home and you either forget or there's a miscommunication and you go back to taking like a different dose than what you were told. Um, so that one's actually really important. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, okay, so things that I thought of um, were a lot of people mentioned is taking it as a directed, um, being forgetful. Okay, so, and this is something that is really good to involve your pharmacist in, um, is knowing, is there a specific time of day that I need to take this particular medication? Because some medications react differently with food. Some medications you have to take in the morning. Some of them you have to take at nighttime, you know, um, but not all of them. And, so really getting, you know, like me personally, if I have to take a medication in the morning, I'll probably forget 25% of the time. Um, but if I take it before bed, I will not miss a dose. So um, knowing that if you can take a medication at bedtime versus during like in the morning is a good thing to know. Um, and associating it with habits, like, you know, that habit of, okay, I brush my teeth, I wash my face, I take my medication, I do this and this and this before bed, like it's just part of my routine. So remember, whereas in the morning, I don't have as strong of a routine. Um, and I know that's opposite for a lot of people. Um, and then also there are a lot of apps that you can download. You can use just like the reminders app on your phone that pops up at a certain time of day. Um, putting your Medicaid or your morning meds right by your toothbrush. So when you do go brush your teeth, um, you think, oh yeah, I got to take my medicine. Having a cup or some water to take it um, works well. Um, also, do you have to take a medication three times a day? Is that not working for you? Is there another medication you could try? Is there an extended release version? You know, so sometimes how many times a day you have to take it can be hard. And that's something too, like if you have to take a medication three times a day and you remember twice a day, is there a better medication to choose from that is better timing for you? And talking about these with both your doctor and your pharmacist, you know, sometimes there's not a way around it, but sometimes there is. Um, also knowing why, why are you taking the medication? Are you educated about it? Do you feel like you had a say? Do you, um, do you feel like it's going to lead to your long-term health is so important um, to make sure that you do take it as directed. And like I said before, you know, like if your doctor's saying here, take this medication every day, you take it every other day or every third day, you go back and you're like, oh, I just am not feeling better. It's not working. A lot of times your doctor will say, oh, well, then let's give you a stronger dose or let's give you another one. And really the issue is that you need to take that first one the right way. And so, you know, making sure you take your medication as directed might help keep you off different medications. So 
Um, that one I think is so important. Also knowing your drug interactions. Um, some medications interact with food. Um, some, some medications, you know, you need to take on an empty stomach. Some you need to take on a full stomach. Some you need to take at dinner time because, you know, your meals at dinner um, are usually higher in calorie and fat content. And so those drugs need to be taken with dinner versus like breakfast. And are your herbal supplements interacting with it? Um, alcohol can interact with a lot of medications. So, um, like I said, have a conversation with your doctor and pharmacist. Um, there are some DNA tests out there. I personally haven't done it, but um, there is a lot of work being done on pharmacogenomics, which means are you, is your DNA processing your medication or not processing your medication the right way? So, you know, taking that DNA test um, is a good idea to to do. And maybe I should look into it so I can be a better advocate for my patients because I will have been through that. Um, and, you know, and then knowing that just because a medication isn't working for you, a different medication in that same class might work differently enough that your body could process it. And if you are an ultra rapid metabolizer, which means that your body is getting rid of it faster than um, a typical person. So, you know, knowing that you might need to take it more frequently versus once a day. So that's a great suggestion, Laura, because our, our DNA really makes such a big um, thing. Um, somebody said, one thing I used to be bad at is asking the pharmacist the right way to take new prescriptions. And I know the pharmacist looks busy and sometimes there really are busier times. And but I can tell you, at least my own experience, I love talking to people about their medications. And if this is new, I always say, please ask, because like, that's another way you can prevent like an error from happening too, is if you go to the, you know, you talk to the pharmacist and say, hey, this is new. Um, you know, can you tell me about it? And if it's not making sense, then maybe there was an error when it was filled or, you know, so really keeping that line of communication open is so important. Um, and, you know, and if you go home and you say, oh, no, I should have talked to the pharmacist, you can call um, it, you know, you don't have to walk away from the pharmacist thinking that was your only chance because it's not. Um, and yeah, and there and antibiotics can are really well known to cause stomach upset. So um, knowing which antibiotics you can and should take it, you know, with food versus, you know, there are some antibiotics that don't work because they bind with the food in your stomach and then they don't absorb. So, you know, um, food administration and timing is important. Um, inhalers are important, um, which we talk about administration. Let's jump over to that. Um, I have administration as far as like injectables um, is hard you know, um, also is technique an issue? Are you taking your inhaler the correct way or not? Um, I always train people. Um, so I am asthmatic. So I take um, asthma medicine um, and I don't put the inhaler in my mouth. Like I don't wrap my lips around like the LB girl um, because it just sprays right into your mouth and then your mouth tastes gross and then not much gets into your lungs. So um talking to your pharmacist, there are spacers that you can use um, and you kind of spray it in and then it like stays aerosolized and you breathe it in. There's also some like dry powder inhalers that you suck in um, that can get into your lungs better. So technique is a huge thing um, and that falls under administration. Um, side effects, I think is a big topic um, as well. Um, you know, some side effects are, um, long are short-lived, like you start a medication and your side effects initially will kind of taper off. Sometimes you get side effects as you're on a medication for a while. Um, so really making sure that you talk to your doctor or your pharmacist about, you know, what side effects can I expect to have? Um, are there side effects to not taking my medication? You know, I'm on this medication for a reason. So what are the risks to not taking that? Um, so like I, you know, conversations are such a good way to have. I know there's a lot of doctor's offices that are now employing pharmacists to go over medications, especially in um, like geriatric offices that, you know, 
the amount of medications goes up as you go older. And um, so, like I said, please, please have conversations. That's the best thing I think you can have for your health is to be an advocate for yourself. Um, effectiveness, is this something that's going to start working right away? Or is this something I need to take a while? Um, you know, like uh, antidepressants, thyroid medications. Um, and um, sorry, I'm reading the comments, which I love the comments. Um, okay, so is this a pill that takes a while? So like your thyroid pills, your antidepressants, um, sometimes you have to be on them for a couple months before your body does what it needs to do to be on it? Or is this something that you can expect to have right away? Is this something that if you miss a dose, you're going to have issues with it? You know, there are some blood thinners that you have where you cannot miss a dose because um, they, you know, they don't stay in your system for very long. So, um, and then we talked about administration, inhalers, knowing the right technique, um, if it's an injectable, seeing if there's a loved one that could help you with it. Um, and technique with that, um, and then cost. Um, I'm gonna, I'm not doctor bashing at all, but because doctors are super important and I respect them, but they don't know the cost of medications very well. <laughs> That's not part of their training. Sometimes it's not even part of like their thought process. Um, and pharmacists, like Pharmacists don't usually get paid on the amount of prescriptions that they give out or what type of prescription, like most pharmacists get paid by the hour. <laughs> so we love saving people money. Like we will help you because um, anyway, we, we know things, we know a lot about how insurance companies work. Um, so like I said, use your resources to your advantage. Um, We've talked a lot about this. Know what your pills look like. So if you go to the pharmacy and they look differently, be sure to ask, is this just a different um, manufacturer or did I get the wrong pill? So know what your pills look like. Um, they all have numbers on them. And also the other thing is it's okay to get a second opinion about your meds. Like if you feel like you need another doctor to look at it, you need a pharmacist to look at it, like, it's okay to get a second opinion. It's okay to find a different doctor. It's okay to switch your prescriptions to a new pharmacy if that pharmacy is not doing well. You know, so you have a say in your medications. And the other really important thing is to make sure that you write down your medications, especially if you were to get admitted to a hospital. Um, even me being a pharmacist, like if I just try to like rattle off the medications that I take, I usually forget one or two. Um, so, Yes, and I'm glad that somebody had an experience with the pharmacist letting know that they could compound it for cheaper. So that's, yeah, so please speak up. And I hope that as we've reached the end of this, that you realize that you have a say in your health care, that you can speak up and you can change things up if you need. So, um, and then uh, just the last thing about medications I was gonna say is just make sure you write, write it down. And if you need a pharmacist to help you write down your list, um, we can help you do that as well. Um, there's some good, you know, resources and templates online. Um, I keep my med list in my phone. Um, and um, so whatever method you use, whether it's paper or technology, it's such a good idea to write them down. Um, preventative care. Here's some more ideas that we have. Wash your dang hands, everybody. If there is anything that we have learned in the last year um, and is to wash your hands. <laughs> I don't think I can stress this enough. Something that I have hoped would we could get rid of as a society is handshakes. And we'll see if they come back after this pandemic, but I really do not want to touch your hands and have all of your germs on my hands now. So <laughs> um, hand sanitizer is really good. Um, and, but also washing with soap and water and scrubbing is so important. So, um, uh, there's some comments coming through about different ideas of what they do with milligrams and doses, taking pictures of the bottles, which is a great idea. 
um, printable business card so he could print a card for himself. That is a great idea. Doses and schedule for your meds is very important. So, you, you know, it's more, it's important to have the name, but you do need to have the dose and how often you take it as well. So thanks for, for commenting on that. Um, vaccinations. Okay. This is a hot topic lately. I feel like I don't need to spend much time on it. It's already 1150 anyways. Um, because we're all in a pandemic and I don't remember the last day that I didn't have something about vaccinations um, pop into my head on my social media feed in the news. So we're just going to keep it light. We're going to move on. Vaccinations are so important. They have been around for way longer than my lifetime. Um, I was reading some stories about um, my mom remembers visiting her uncle who had polio and lived his life in one of these chambers. Um, and, and how lucky I am that I can raise my children and I don't have to worry about polio because of vaccinations and how important that is. Um, my dad was hospitalized with mumps when he was a kid. Again, I don't have to worry about that with my children. Um, so I think as we're, um, Going through this pandemic, I know there's so many political reasons coming up, whatever my my stance as a pharmacist is vaccinations are so important vaccination. The safety of them is um, I mean, they are so safe. I mean, you have a few cases of anaphylaxis per million vaccine doses. So your risk is so small. Um, and so I would just encourage you to have vaccines um the cases here's the polio cases and then after um after uh, the vaccine came the risk of polio is almost non-existent in developed countries right now so um so important COVID-19 um I I just wanted a I had hepatitis A when I gave this last time, and now I cannot think of a better example of vaccines and health than our current situation that we're in. So I would I would strongly advocate for um, getting your COVID vaccine when you it is your time to get it. Um, we just hit the five hundred thousand, so the half millionth death this week um, in America, and um, I read that that's more people that died. Um, during the Civil War, during you know World War One, World War Two, all of the wars since then combined, and it's somewhat of a sobering number. Um, who is sick of hearing about COVID? Because I am. <laughs> I'm sick of it being like, I don't know. So let's get our vaccines. Let's do our part. Wash your hands. Mask up, and hopefully we can see an end to this pandemic. Um, and then preventative care. We're just gonna fly through this. Um, Physicals are important because they can address your current issues and preventing future ones. It's a good idea to get them yearly. Find a good doctor you trust. Um, you can switch doctors if you don't like your doctor. So, you know, not everybody will <clears throat> have the same experience with the same doctor. Your personality is different. Know your family history. Um, when you go into your appointments, be prepared. Um, so I am really good at talking to other people about their health, but when it comes to me talking about mine with a doctor, I totally, my mind goes blank and I forget everything. So write it down um, before your appointment. Um, so make sure, you know, if you need to bring a family or friend to help you, that's fine. Um, and the other thing, if you have something you're concerned about, tell your doctor, I can tell you. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. There's nothing they haven't seen or dealt with. And um, so um, anyway, if I have any advice for going to a doctor's appointment, write, write things down before you go. And um, I think your appointment will be a lot better. Um, making sure that you, your, your health test, your blood pressure and your heart rate, your cholesterol, um, your hemoglobin A1C is a test for diabetes. It checks to see like what your average blood sugar is over you know the past three months um to tell you if you're at risk for that um and then you know are you getting your blood drawn to check for your you know infection or your kidneys your liver your blood and 
you know, everything else. So those are important checks to have. Um, cancer screenings, we'll just go through this really quickly. Um, stop smoking. <laughs> Tobacco use is the number one cancer risk factor. Um, doctors and pharmacists are trained to help people stop smoking. So reach out to them if you need um, and see if we can help decrease your cancer risk as well. Uh, testing for vitamin D level is also a very true thing, Brad. Thank you for bringing that up. Many are deficient and a lot of us in Utah are as well because um, the sun rays are at a frequency that our bodies have a hard time converting to active vitamin D. So while we are in the sun, our bodies um, have a really hard time converting um, that to what can, we can use in our bodies. And so sometimes you do need to take supplemental vitamin D. And there is a lot of research that a lot of like autoimmune diseases are linked to low vitamin D levels. So, um, you know, like a genetic predisposition that are exacerbated by certain things and vitamin D is one thing that, you know, research has shown. So a uh, good comment, Brad. Um, breast cervical cancers, you know, know your family history. Um, there are geneticists that can talk to you about what your personal risks are, making sure you do monthly self-exams, mammograms, um, pap smears are every three years instead of one, which is uh, really great news, <laughs> unless you have had an abnormal one, and then I think it's more frequently. So um, colorectal cancer, um, I know it's so miserable getting a colonoscopy. I, I guess I, I don't know firsthand, but I've heard stories. I have never had one. But colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of death from cancer in the U.S. A third of the U.S. adults are not getting screened as recommended, and at least 60% of colorectal cancer deaths could be avoided because it's a slow-growing cancer, and if they catch it early, um, okay, hold on, then um, there's a really good chance you could be treated. So, um, Okay, we're just going to screen. You need to be screening at 45 years old, which this is not new, but um, if you have a genetic predisposition for colon cancer, then it is important to, to be open with your doctor about that so they can get you tested at the right age. Um, and lung cancer, 30% of all cancer deaths came from smoking. Um, also testing your home for radon and um, exercise. Again, exercising is good. Eat pl plenty of fruits and veggies as well. Um, prostate cancer, the second most common cancer in men behind skin, which skin cancer, I, my dermatologist told me that Utah is the highest state for melanoma. So having yearly skin checks is so important. Um, and uh, prostate cancer is as well. And I know that check is miserable, but make sure that you start getting tested for that. Um, it, it's a lot, it's a lot less miserable to have a quick test than it is to have cancer. So that's all I'm going to say about that. So it is 1158 and I, um, would be happy to answer questions if you have questions or if you want to get on with your day, then that is great too. Um, Thanks everybody for your time. And again, uh, I know I talked about this at the beginning. I know um, public health is one of those thankless jobs, especially in a pandemic. And I wanted to thank you for everything you do for Salt Lake County. And thank you, Jennifer. This has been absolutely wonderful. You fit so many topics into an hour. It's I hope um, I'm quite <laughs> impressed. <laughs> So, well, thanks everybody. I, I enjoyed my time with you and um, I hope you have a great day. You too. Thank you so much. And um, participants, I know a lot of you were asking for slides. We've recorded this workshop so we can distribute that to you. Um, and then do you have an email? It looks like we have a question if somebody could um, email you privately. There you go. Oh, it's perfect. Long. You're on top of it. It looks like it. Let me redo that. There we go. Okay. It's long. 
mountainstarhealth.com. So I don't know why it was so goofy when I wrote it the first time. <laughs> Excellent. And thank you so much for all the tips um, from that pharmacy angle. I don't think we've ever presented on that before. And so it was really nice to get that insight from you. You're welcome. All right, everybody.